Amanda Carlson and we're here on campus at the Minneapolis Community and Technical College. We're here to learn about aluminum welding. This is the first episode in a three-part series. This episode we will discuss aluminum welding principles with Todd Bregadam. Thanks Amanda. Hi, my name is Todd Bregadam. I'm the welding instructor here at Minneapolis Community and Technical College. Today we're going to talk about welding aluminum um, and we're going to go over first the uh, preparation of aluminum and also some of the concerns with welding aluminum and how it's different than steel. Aluminum is uh, different than steel in that it's got a lower melting point. Melting point of aluminum is around 1200 degrees. Um, but just because it has a lower melting point doesn't mean that you don't need any less heat. Um, the specific heat of aluminum or the energy it takes to heat it is significantly higher than steel. Um, and also, depending on what process you're using, for instance with TIG, um, you may be only putting heat uh, into the aluminum part of the time uh, as, and the uh, positive side of the AC cycle we're really concerned with cleaning. There are several different types of aluminum and aluminum series generally are uh, listed by a number. Um, we have 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000 series aluminum, several different kinds. Um, and so the first thing to understand is what series of aluminum you have. Next, uh, we need to consider the filler material that we're using to make our weld. Uh, again, the, the type of aluminum you're welding uh, is going to have a, a, a great uh, impact on what type of filler metal you choose to use. Um, the mechanical properties of the resulting weld is really the most important thing. What I mean by that is, uh, is the weld going to hold up for the service conditions that it's going to be under? So filler rod selection or filler metal selection is very important. And I have a few examples here that I'm going to go over. This is a 4043 uh, aluminum filler rod and uh, it's a 4000 series aluminum primarily alloyed with silicone. This is a 5000 series filler rod, a 5356. Um, and uh, so again, it's a 5000 series, very similar to the 5000 series you're welding. Which one you use um, will depend again on the, the weld properties uh, or the mechanical properties of the finished weld. Uh, the other uh, wire that we'll use is um, is this aluminum alloy, the spool of a uh, uh, one pound spool of aluminum welding wire. Uh, and this is also 4043. Um, there really is not much of a difference between the 4043 filler rod and the 4043 welding wire. Uh, the main difference is, is that this one has electricity running through it and so therefore it is an electrode. Uh, this one is not going to have electricity running through it and so it is considered a filler rod in the GTAW or TIG welding process. And the other thing that we need to be concerned about no matter which series aluminum we're, we're talking about is the oxide layer that's present on all aluminum. Um, since we were talking about melting points, I think we really do need to talk about the melting point of the oxide layer. Oxide layer is uh, formed when aluminum com comes in contact with oxygen or the air. And uh, that oxide layer has to be dealt with because the oxide layer in the aluminum has a melting point of about twice or double the melting point of the base metal itself. So dealing with that oxide layer is very important and there's several ways we can do this. Um, uh, one is to uh, etch the aluminum using muriatic acid. Some people choose to go that way. Um, the other uh, method that's commonly used is to brush the aluminum. Um, typically I use a uh, scratch brush that is stainless steel. And uh, this is an example of a scratch brush here that's stainless. Um, this is also a scratch brush that's stainless steel. And the thing you want to remember is, is when you use whatever brush you use, make sure you keep it dedicated for aluminum. Um, this scratch brush right here, as you can see, it's a little more beat up. It's not quite as new as the other one. And it's also been labeled carbon steel. So I would not want to use this um, scratch brush on the aluminum. Uh, the reason why is, is uh, we can embed the particles of carbon steel into the aluminum and uh, that will make it much more difficult to weld because we've now contaminated the base metal. Okay. 
Uh, one thing you don't want to use is a, uh, a wire wheel uh, attachment on a, on a power brush or grinder. Um, this will tend to embed the oxides into the aluminum. Again, because as it's rotating, uh, with any pressure, it's really smearing those oxides into the layer instead of in, into the aluminum instead of removing them. Uh, so again, avoid using a power brush with a, uh, uh, on, a, on a grinder. Um, the other option is to use a sanding disc, a flapper disc like this. Um, and they do make these especially for aluminum. Um, so again, just like your scratch brush, uh, keep it dedicated to aluminum only. Um, don't get too cheap and use the same one you used for the last project. Um, okay? uh, again, uh, you want to go with light pressure and let the wheel do the work uh, because, uh, again, it's very easy to smear those oxides into the base metal itself, and then it becomes very difficult to weld. This is a uh, cutoff uh, wheel for a four and a half inch angle grinder. As you can see, it's, it's very thin. Um, and these can be used for cutting aluminum. Uh, however, you want to be very careful uh, because as you cut through aluminum with this, the aluminum particles will actually embed in the cutoff disc. You'll actually be able to see them in the disc themselves. Uh, the, the tricky part comes is when you go to reuse the disc, um, the aluminum heats back up at a different rate than the fibers of the disc itself. And so because uh, it does that, it can actually force the fibers apart. And if that happens at a high speed, the wheel can actually explode. So I use, I only use these discs, I only use a brand new disc for cutting aluminum and then I dispose of that disc after I'm done using it. Prepping the aluminum is uh, fairly easy as far as brushing it goes. Um, well, basically what you don't want to do is you don't want to, you don't want to go back, use a back and forth motion and really scrub hard. It's actually kind of just a delicate uh, motion in one direction. And I can actually see that oxide layer being lifted off. And so when you take a look at that, you can actually see there's quite a bit of difference between where I brushed and where I didn't. So now the oxide layer that you're dealing with um, can have various thicknesses depending on how the aluminum was stored. If the aluminum was stored outdoors um, under, uh, uh, under the big blue sky, um, it might have a fairly uh, thick oxide layer. Um, uh, if your aluminum was stored indoors or milled recently, it might have a very thin oxide layer. So again, whether you etch with muriatic acid or brush, um, that will depend on the thickness of the oxide layer and, and, and what you have to deal with. So, The other way the oxide layer is dealt with is uh, by the use of polarity in welding. Um, so for gas metal arc welding of aluminum, we are using uh, direct current electrode positive, which is also known as reverse polarity. And the nice part about using reverse polarity is reverse polarity helps break up the oxide layer on the surface of the aluminum. Uh, so by default, because we're using reverse polarity with the GMAW process, um, we, are, we are busting up the oxide layer with wire feed. So a lot of tougher to weld aluminums, and I'll show you one later, um, is, uh, are sometimes best welded with gas metal arc welding. Now in gas tungsten arc welding, um, we are going to be using alternating current. Um, and in alternating current, we have both direct current electrode positive and direct current electrode negative in, a, in the AC sine wave. And on the direct current electrode positive side, um, we get that same kind of cleaning action that we do with wire feed. In other words, it's breaking up the oxide layer on the surface of the aluminum. Uh, with the DC negative side of the uh, AC cycle, we're actually getting penetration into the, into the aluminum itself. Um, so the balance between positive and negative when using an alternating current with TIG is very important and we'll discuss that when we look at the machine. Uh, no matter if you're using TIG or wire feed or whatever else, um, the aluminum needs to be clean in the first place. Uh, it needs to, uh, all grease and oils need to be removed. Um, any dirt or dust uh, 
uh, actually it needs to be cleaned off the metal. So uh, cleaning the metal is, is actually very, very important with welding aluminum. Even the, uh, even the filler rod um, needs to be clean um, because you can have a completely clean base metal, but if you're adding a filler rod in that has steel dust on it or grease or oil, um, again, you're adding contaminants back into your, back into your weld. Another thing we'll be using in both gas metal arc welding and gas tungsten uh, arc welding is a shielding gas. And with welding aluminum, with either of these processes, we typically use 100% argon. Again, the shielding gas doesn't really clean the metal, um, and it does not remove the oxide layer. So again, um, we do need a shielding gas to make the weld happen, but uh, the metal, uh, we have to deal with the cleanliness of the metal and the oxide layer first before we start welding. Uh, when we're talking about aluminum base metals and we're talking about aluminum welding, I would say we need to separate it into two categories. Uh, one would be uh, aluminum fabrication, in other words, working with uh, materials that are stock from a, a steel yard and building a project from the ground up. The other main category is maintenance welding or making repairs to aluminum pieces, and that's where things get a little more tricky. It's very, very important, again, to know what type of base metal you're dealing with, if at all possible, because not all welding, not all aluminums are weldable. Uh, in fact, some cast aluminums are not weldable, and some of the other higher series are not weldable, or not weldable without filler rod. So again, knowing which type of aluminum you have is very important. This is an example of a uh, repair weld made on an aluminum piece. This is actually a footing for a dock used here in one of our lakes in uh, Minnesota. And the aluminum tube is separated from the aluminum plate. So this aluminum plate, as you can see, has a lot of gunk on it and a very, very hot, heavy oxide layer because it's been underwater season after season. And so that oxide layer is very thick. I decided to deal with that oxide layer by using a flapper disc and lightly cleaning off the area to be welded. Um, that you can see around here. Um, we also used a new tube uh, from a steel yard to replace the old tube that was there before. I chose the gas metal arc welding uh, process um, for this project because, again, we're working on the reverse polarity side, and so we get a lot of cleaning action and a lot of deposition at once. So it was actually easier to make this repair weld. Even after cleaning, it was difficult to deal with the oxide layer, but gas metal arc welding made it a whole lot easier.